Today on the table, I'm bringing you a semi-automatic pistol caliber comparison. Now, I had already shot this video once, but... Ah! There he is, beating that dead horse! Every couple of months, I'll go through my channel, look at videos that are not performing, and I will see if I can adjust the title, thumbnail, something like that to make it perform. I clicked on the video I had already done, and it is absolutely horrible. There are three things to making a video perform. Title, thumbnail, and the first 30 seconds. You have to hold the viewer for 30 seconds in order for it to count as a legitimate view. So, deleting a video off of YouTube is completely horrible because it shows YouTube that not only is your channel not growing, it's sinking. You delete a video off YouTube, your channel suffers heavily. So what I'm probably gonna do is just disguise this video with, I don't know, a cat playing with yarn or something like that and call it fluffy or somebody wrenching underneath a sink and say the best performance out of a sink drain. You know, something to ensure that people don't click on the video because I don't want anyone to see it. It's that bad. So your main calibers, you got 45, 40, 9 mil, 380. Now each one of these have a specific purpose and they do excel in a certain spot. 45, it's a heavy slug with a wide diameter that flies subsonic. 40, it's kind of like the bastard child of nine millimeter and 45. And it's got the most kinetic energy right at the muzzle. Nine millimeter, it's a high speed round. It's narrow, so it can penetrate really well. It has the highest BC, ballistic coefficient, so it hangs on to its kinetic energy longer than the 45 and 40. Then you got 380. That excels because you can pack it into a really small firearm. Now, yeah, you can get smaller nines, like these, and this is about as small as you can go. Once you start getting smaller than that, it's like cramming a bunch of horsepower into an engine and the firearms burn out really quickly. Even these smaller 380s, I cannot imagine they have a long life expectancy. Your 10,000 round test, you can pretty much forget about that. If these smaller 380s make it to about 1,000 rounds, I'd call them good. If they make it to like 2,000 rounds, I'd be tickled pink. That would be way beyond the expectancy I would ever expect out of those. And now you're probably like, but we know you have an XDS-45 that typically goes, well, that specifically goes against everything you just said. Yes. And I don't expect a long life expectancy out of that firearm. It's just too much power and too small of a package. And you're going to also want to expect, you know, a high cleaning regimen. A 1911 is a little bit different for a 45. it It's got a big heavy spring in it, big heavy slide. The 45 shoots dirty, so it's able to move through all that crap. And this is made for that size of round. You can expect these to last a lot longer. A 1911 is designed, you know, we're gonna train multiple people. They're gonna learn how to shoot on the firearm. They're gonna practice on the firearm regularly. And it's gotta keep going so it can be passed down to the next military person. An XDS-45, you're training one person. One person is practicing on it and it's probably not gonna get passed to another person. So like I said, that's where 380 comes in because you can get to a smaller firearm. It's a less powerful round. You could pack a nine in here. Like, what is it? The SIG P239 or something like that. But in my opinion, and this is my opinion, that's too much power for that small of a firearm. You're just going to burn it out. Then you also got your off rounds, like your SIG 357. Basically a 40 neck down to a 9 millimeter. Maybe there's an advantage there. I mean, yes, you do shoot this projectile pretty hard and pretty fast, but the cost of this cartridge, is it really worth it? I don't think so. And that's how I also feel about the 40. Yes, at one point in time, 40 was super popular. They were manufacturing a lot of ammunition. Police were using the 40 pretty regularly. The Glock 22 was very popular. So it kept the cost down. Now that 40 pretty much died off because after the FBI did their test and showed that, hey, 40, 40, and 45, 40, and 9 millimeter, their advantages are pretty much mute. They pretty much perform about the same 
inside of Ballistic Jelly against hard penetration, uh, against harder objects to penetrate, and how they interact with the body. Basically, we learned if a round is not flying above 2,200 feet per second, they perform about the same. Cavity as we expand and recover from is different when projectiles hit at greater than 2,200 feet a second. At that point, it appears we have surpassed the elasticity capability of human tissue, and that temporary wound cavity begins tearing at its limits and margins and becomes the permanent wound cavity, which also is the conclusion why people who are center punched with rifle projectiles typically succumb much quicker than people who are hit with handgun projectiles. The byproduct of that also seems that when, when a rifle projectile at those velocities bypasses an organ, you will still have organic damage. So since 40 is basically not a mainstream cartridge anymore, it's more like the class of like the SIG 357, I do not recommend getting a 40 because the cost of ammunition, stuff like that, makes it harder to shoot. So what do we got left? You got 380, 9mm, and 45. Now, 45 is really awesome if you want to run silenced. That's also the second reason why I have an XDS-45, because I have the FNX-45 Tactical, and someday I'm going to quit dragging my feet and get a silencer for it. It makes sense for me to do that because I reload ammunition, and it's a lot easier to re reload one caliber in mass than to change between two calibers. Yeah, I'm eventually going to get a 380 for a CCW, but right now, just working with the 45. Now with a silencer, you're going to get a couple of different noises. One is the mechanical sound. That's the slide moving back and forth. The next one is the hot gases expanding. That's what the silencer attacks. The third sound is pretty much what the person you're shooting at hears, or game, animal, whatever. And that's the bullet break at the sound barrier. So with a 45, because it's already going slower than the sound barrier, it doesn't have to break the sound barrier, and then it also doesn't go back into subsonic. So like, say you shoot a cartridge, it's flying supersonic, as it transitions back to subsonic, the shockwave catches up with it and throws your shots off. So any sort of long range shooting, I'd recommend a 45. Yeah, you can do it with nine and stuff, but it's getting harder to predict where the round's gonna go because you have your supersonic wave crashing in the back of the round. Now, if I had no intentions at all to ever running a silencer, a lot of you probably aren't gonna wanna hear this, but I wouldn't touch a 45. There's just no reason to. The ammunition's heavier, it costs more, the ammo's not quite as available. Yeah, you do get a bigger diameter hole. This is true. But let's be honest, how many people are not gonna decide or are going to decide whatever they're trying to take from you, unless, of course, it's your life and it's some sort of combat situation, that seeing themselves leaking onto the ground would not change their mind. I know if I seen myself leaking on the ground, I would instantly forget about whatever it is I was trying to take from you and be like, okay, I need medical care. And that's the reason for the 380. Yeah, this doesn't cause the maximum amount of damage. But it doesn't matter, it causes enough. All you gotta do is see yourself leaking on the ground and most people, unless you know there's drugs involved or it's some sort of combat situation where they know they're gonna die if they don't kill you first, are gonna be like, okay, I need medical attention, forget about you, I have things to take care of. And that's another big reason with the nine. It doesn't really matter on the hole. You're just punching a hole. The only guarantee you have of stopping someone, say for example, you shot the biggest cartridge you could fit inside of a handgun. You hit them directly in the vital, which is the head, or uh, the heart, I mean, or the liver, kidney, something like that, and they're going to die no matter what. They still have roughly 15 seconds where they can cause harm on you. The only guarantee, the only off switch is right here. Everything else is just a timer. Yeah, my heart no longer exists, but I still have an amount of time where I can do things. This is the only off switch. So saying that a 45 because it's a bigger diameter hole is better for self-defense isn't true. Just having your heart abducted by aliens, it's gone now. You still have roughly 15 seconds where you can do something. Most people are not going to choose to do things because, well, 
I'm leaking on the ground. I have bigger fish to fry now. It's just, it's just a bad argument. Yeah, I get it. 45 does do more damage. 10 millimeter does do more damage. 40 cal does do more damage. But the, da the damage usually needed is definitely within the 380 and 9 millimeter realm. The 380 has enough penetration on a ballistic target to where it will still get the same effect. Unless, of course, there's other objectives. They're otherwise motivated to keep going. In which case, still, this is the only off switch. The rest of the body is just a timer. So what do I recommend? If you want to play with silencers, hit the still. Obviously 45, it flies subsonic. Now I had heard there was some video out there testing this and debunking it, but until I see that video and the tests are pretty inclusive or I test it myself, as far as I'm concerned, if you want to go silent, 45. Yeah, you can get subsonic rounds for a 9mm, but now you're raising the cost. You're taking away what makes 9mm awesome. That's the massive amount of ammo on hand everywhere. How cheap the ammunition is. Why do it? 40, I just don't see a purpose for it anymore. Yeah, when it was commonly used by the police, because I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the cartridge itself, but now that it's not a common cartridge, and the cost of the cartridge is so much, I just don't see any use for it in any other package because any package you can fit a 40 cal in, you can fit either a 45 or a 9. 380, if you want to go small, I strongly recommend this. Uh, SIG even made a really, really small 9 mil. It was the SIG P... I don't remember what it was, but it had a bunch of problems. I feel, honestly, that was because they were trying to pack a 9 millimeter in too small of a package. When you go with a smaller package, just like with engine building, like for example, when I put a blower on my Jimmy, I rebuilt the engine about every 3,000 miles. A dragster gets one pass down the track and the engine needs to be rebuilt. And I believe that wisdom, I can't prove this yet because I don't have the money. Eventually someday I will. I'm going to shoot a bunch of firearms to death and see if I can or cannot prove it. As you pack more pa power into a smaller package, the life expectancy goes away. You're trading power for life expectancy. So anything small, I'd recommend a 380. I hope this video had helped you in any sort of way. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the cards right here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.